This is the most popular Class B RV camper van sold in North America. This is the Winnebago Travado 59K. Today, we're gonna to compare this camper van to its rival. This is by Integra. This is the Ethos. You determine which one you like better. I'll give you my thoughts. We're gonna look at overall quality, floor plan nuances. This one is not lithium equipped. The other rig is not lithium equipped. So we're on even par there. And a big shout out to La Mesa RV in Mesa, Arizona for giving us access to this rig. Let's get into it. Tried and true floor plan. So you have a handle here with a pop-up electrical. There's a lagoon table mount here which means you can put a table here for this person. These chairs spin around. This is on the Ram ProMaster chassis. This particular edition has the previous year model. Uh, with the lagoon table installed here, you'd have a surface about right here. And this is pretty cool. This person here has a little bit of a slide out table that's probably meant more for the galley. It's a little bit of a tight spot right here, but it comes up like this and can go like that. So you have a counter extension for the galley. This person can maybe do a little bit of work here or with the table here, this could be one long service. So pretty cool, great use of ex extra space and just swings out of the way when you are not using it. Corian countertop, two burner propane stove. This is a residential style sink, very nice. Pretty big sink. Again, a power pop up right here, very nice. Here's a Ram track. So you can slide things in with a mounting bracket, goes here, blinds, these are the uh, blinds for um, sunscreen, privacy, and then this is the bug screen right here. Paper towel holder, lights that on or off right here, kind of cool. Down below, a little bit of a storage unit right here. Microwave, convection, very nice, storage 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 with a locking key pretty cool and then you got the nova cool fridge which is always really great for my experience has been very durable this is the eco hot this allows you to recirculate the water until hot water gets to the faucet recirculating meaning go back into the fresh water tank so you're not wasting water waiting for it to warm up up above lots of cabinets and i love this color scheme of the dark with the kind of off-white matte finish, not polished gloss, and lots of storage in here. Really nice fit and finish. Again, just a really rich color. Solid locking, positive locking cabinets, hardware, real hinges, really nice. Just really well done. And just, again, copious amounts of storage on both sides. Take a peek here, here quick. There's your solar controller. And you got a little bit of uh, electrical thing here for the television, which sits right here with your sound bar. This does have a swing out arm so the TV can adjust so we can watch this in bed very easily or even watch TV out here. These are light switches. Here's a nice W for your coat hook, key hook. Up here are your controls which are pretty nice. So dimming light here, pretty snappy. Uh, power control, this is your tanks, so you can uh, see what the tank levels are. This is the Truma furnace, runs off electric or propane. This is the inverter, and this is the uh, LP on off, and then this is your tank warmer, so if you are in cold weather, plug in short power, you power this up, and it keeps the tanks warm and from freezing. Down here, Got coach battery on off, awning lights and awning out. You can see that it's clearly out with the lights are just on. You can just see that. So this floor plan, very famous for its openness, which this in no doubt is very open feeling. Two, we'll call them twin size beds. So this is a little bit shorter on this size side versus this side. So a taller person would be on this side, a little bit shorter. So think of, I don't know, mom, dad grandpa grandma and then i've seen folks do some fun things with decorating this so it feels like bed but not feel like you're in a bedroom all the time these cushions are totally movable so you can 
move these around. These lights uh, are switches right here doing fun things. And then these are reading lights right here. This is kind of nice. You can get some fresh air on you, make, look at the view. Um, again, kind of the same deal, closing. And this is a bug screen here. And these are the side by slide by side windows with your bug screen right here. Here's another Ram track. Pretty nice. Overall feel of quality is definitely here. It's solid. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, this is the system side that has water tanks, what have you on it. There's a little bit of storage. And the way you make this, if you want a big size bed, you see the slat right here? You kind of move these together in the middle, use these three cushions and this entire surface becomes a bed. Plenty for lots of romping around or grandkids or what have you. This side has lots of storage underneath the bed. You can see that. So huge amounts of space underneath the longer bed, which is pretty cool. This is where some of your electrical panel access is. And there's a little cubby right here. You just see that. So guess what's behind here? Door number one. Let's take a look. Well, that would be the bathroom. So this is a very popular floor plan for the bathroom. This is, there's the light right there. Light switch right there. And this is the water pump in case you forgot to turn it on. So this contains a traditional wet flush toilet. This is a shower pan. So your drain is right here for the shower. The shower is right here. Hey everybody, by the way, my name is Scott. Thanks for watching uh, this video. Let me know what you think of the Travado versus the other guy. This is the medicine chest, which is nicely done. This is the back window of the van, right? So you sort of need to have your covers up often if you're using the toilet. That's the way it rolls. Here's your um, bath towel. This is a roll down screen. Uh, toilet tissue goes right here. And then this is your wardrobe, which is right here, which again is really, really large. Space for hangers. So if you want hanging clothes, you would remove this uh, shelf right here. And that's how you would hang some clothes. Uh, I've seen people kind of modify this. So hang some clothes here, then have another uh, racking system for, for shelves. Down below is lots of huge space for all of your stuff. That was a really deep, deep drawer. You see that? Um, this is not anything it's an access panel for behind. This is your shower curtain. And what's kind of interesting is because this is wood and this is wood, and you got the big old door here with metal, right? Um, you actually have to use a shower curtain. A shower curtain will go up here along the uh, curtain rail. And here's the hooks. So this goes along like that. And you kind of stand around. And the shower curtain would cover all the wood and the door. And that would be your shower experience. Which I've heard folks really enjoy it. Pull down sink. Like that. Pretty cool. Winnebago Travado, again, best-selling camper van and floor plan in North America for good reason. It feels very open. There's lots of windows. It's got a, a compact galley. Um, you're kind of in your bedroom all the time. And if that doesn't bother you, you're really going to like this. If you're on the larger size type person, you're really going to like this. If you want two separate beds, but be in the same space, this is going to be really great. And the bathroom, very, very popular floor plan, uh, rear bath, as that is called. The quality again is pretty good. I'm always amazed at how well Winnebago does the, the cabinetry. It's just solid. And even from my experience of owning my Winnebago Travado 59 G floor plan, I can tell you the cabinetry is solid, the galley is solid, the plumbing is solid. Um, now in my fifth year of full-time travel, Winnebago does a really good job at building out these small compact motorhomes uh, that you can park anywhere, drive anywhere, you put it in park, and you're at camp. Now that we've seen the inside, let's go take a peek outside. Again, for comparison purposes, let me show you that. Giant running board, um, proper height, proper width. Good job, Winnebago. Again, big old awning, powered, illuminated. This is the bedroom window we saw from inside. Love this size. Here's a solar um, port, so if you want to have more solar out here, you can do that. This is the 12 volt stuff and cable. This is 110 outlets. 
bike rack, ladder, tow hitch. I think the towing capacity is about 3,500 pounds. Got a TV antenna up above, backup camera comes standard. This is where the generator exhaust is, so this does not have a lithium system. It is a traditional RV generator, quieter than they've been in the past. And this is the gray waste and the toilet waste right there handle. They came out the same drain. Looking up above, we have a light here. So when you're doing your tank duty, you have some illumination in the dark, which you probably don't want to do that in the dark. Uh, here's the Truma vent, uh, Truma vent for the furnace. Down here is your hose storage propane engine exhaust your 30 amp in and again the slide by side windows pretty nice little rig all right let's go look at the competition you ready let's go the competition we're comparing this to is on a Ram ProMaster again. This is by Integra. This is the Ethos. And this is the floor plan. That is very similar to the Turbato 59K. Let me point out some uh, things on the inside that are different right away. And that is you have the traditional airplane style seat that comes out like that so this seat spins around this seat spins around this person has a little bit of work surface this person really doesn't this isn't a counter extension but it would be kind of awkward in that seating position so maybe this tray that slides out here that's more flush with the countertop is more important to you so this has kind of one usable space from the cab seat point of view maybe you like that better or maybe you like this better even. This tucks away very easily, closes up, and you're done. No power pedestal on top, but there is one here with USB. There is a step up. This is a little storage, nice. Looking at the galley, about the same size. Large, uh, Corian, very nice. This is a two burner propane. I would say nicer looking, residential style sink. Pretty good size. Looking at the fridge, different brand, but about the same size. Door opening that way, which is interesting. This is the microwave situation, also a convection. And you got a little bit of storage here, a little bit of storage here. I would say the quality of the woodwork is a little better on the Travato from that standpoint. Windows, slide by. This is your awning for blackout. This is kind of an Integra thing, a little bit of a residential feel here with a valance. So it's kind of nice, a little soft corners. Looking at the storage, they are positive locking. There's this button right here, hard to see, but that actually gets you into the excess of the storage. So these are lined side, top and bottom, which I prefer because things don't seem to move around as much. Looking in this one, kind of the same deal. And if we look at all of these, it's one long continuous cabinet, which I prefer. If you got long items, you just have more options to put them in here. Most people put shelving in here. So you have two levels and uh, let me know what you think about the cabinet being one long cabinet versus compartmentalized, which we saw in the Travato. So again, one huge long, this being the only separation between the two cabinets. Again, here's the positive locking thing. You can see that. So again, nice touch, hardware not showing, but still getting the same functionality. On this side, same deal. One long cabinet. And on this side is the, has some of the TV components. This is the stereo. Uh, this does have a CD, which is kind of cool. Um, speakers, I'm not seeing speakers. Yes, I am. So these are built in speaker here and then a speaker back here. So that would fill your van with sound. I love that idea. Television again on a hinge that can 
swing this way or swing out and then look at the your patio area. Let's look at the bed situation because this is a little different. On this side, again, the shorter size person here, this is a few inches longer here. On this side, there is no storage because this is where your components are, water tanks, etc. On this side though, there is a fair amount of storage. Let me lift this up for you. Whoa. I would say the other Travato has a bit more storage. It does have the Froli sleep system, which I really enjoy in my Travato. The bedding arrangement's a little different, and this one includes uh, these lift up, do like a chase lounge. So that's kind of cool. And then in the middle for the table, you have mount one, mount two. This is the table right here. So a pole would go up and the table would mount. This is kind of the way Travato K floor plan used to have it. Now Winnebago's gone to the lagoon style table. So you can have a table here, but you can swing it out of the way. This, when your table's up, you're kind of, I'm gonna say locked in, but some people prefer a permanent table and some don't. Now it does not look like these pull together. I'm not seeing that this allows for any pieces to come up to fill in the middle, unless it's the table. Um, otherwise, and these are the pillows you kind of rearrange that make up your bed at night. Again, night lights balance here again, and it also has a pocket door situation right here to close off the bathroom. So it slides out really nicely. So again, a very nice, clean, pleasant color scheme. Modern, I would say. The absence of hardware gives it a little more streamlined approach or feel, I guess is the right word. Um, lots of lights. These folks have a, a system here, a Firefly type system electronics. So this is where you control all your panel uh, RV systems versus having what we saw Winnebago is doing with a bunch of uh, switches and gadgets across the top here. So this is a little more contemporary. Uh, this is a little more traditional with your control panels going across the top. Let's take a look at the bathroom and then I'll show you outside. Very similar, right? Medicine chest. I would say more storage, shower, folding sink. Folds up like that. Smaller. I would say this arrangement's a little nicer. This indicates that this is a shower miser. So again, you're recirculating water back into the fresh water tank until this turns colored, indicating that your water is hot. Traditional flush toilet with a black tank. Specs at the end stay for that. Here's a towel rack. This is the shower curtain. So again, you have wood in here for the wardrobe. This is the back doors of the van. So you would need to deploy your shower curtain standing here to shower. If we look at the wardrobe, it's gonna be somewhat familiar. This is dedicated for only hanging clothes or you could probably put some shelving system in. Um, this does have carpet on both uh, uh, bottom and back and on the top. So this will help with some noise, keep things from moving around. Storage, storage, and you guessed it more storage. Storage on the, on the bottom here. This is your, your window blinds. Pretty cool. And that rounds out the bathroom. Interestingly, here's a few controls back here. So you don't have to get out of bed to touch the digital display, which is up there. And for the Truma, this is where you control the heat because um, I don't think that is integrated with the digital display at this point. So what do you think? The Integra Ethos 20T floor plan. It's very much a K. Galley behind the driver, two twin beds, rear bath. Very, very popular floor plan duplicated across most of the brands in the camper van space. Big differences are the table situation. I think the galley is a little bigger on the Ethos. Otherwise, it's the, pretty much the same. I would say the cabinetry feels more sleek to me versus having the hardware stick out. I would say the overall quality build finish, there's kind of, kind of a good example there, just feels a little more solid to me on the Winnebago. But not bad.
right? So let's get into the, uh, let me show you outside, and then let's get um, into the, the pricing for the current models and the specifications. We'll do some comparisons there as well. Hey, if you're enjoying the video, give a thumb up. Sure appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Let me show you outside. Stepping outside, we see a big running board here. So looking outside, it's pretty similar territory. So we have an awning. It is armless, but I see anchor points if you want to put poles out if it's a little windy. Here's a difference here I see. This has a speaker system exterior, which is nice, so you can control zones. Here we have the power, 110. Coming around the back, this has a third-party ladder, or tire carrier, rather. This is where your gray and black valves are. Pull the valve, that's where the hose connects. A light. Here's all of the components on the outside here. Uh, this is kind of a personal preference. So you got solar, more outlets. This is uh, fill your tank. This is city water, pressurized water, 30 amp, and then satellite or cable rather right there for you. And that's opposed to the way Winnebago's doing it, which is a, a forced situation right here to open the doors to do all that business. Generator, exhaust, Truma furnace vent, propane, and then there's the exhaust for the chassis. So fairly familiar territory, running board, Nice coach. So it boils down to how do you plan to travel in your camper van? Why do you want to travel in a camper van? And then really kind of list out what your um, things are you're not willing to compromise on and what things are you willing to compromise on? Maybe it's price point. Uh, these are very similar. I think it's really, again, about your personal preference on tables, on quality, on fit and finish, which is a personal preference. The digital display is pretty cool in this rig. Um, maybe that's the way you want to go for, for convenience and simplification. So we're going to show you the price and the specifications of the Travado versus the Ethos here. Uh, so stay for that. But I want to say thank you for uh, watching. Comment below which of these would you prefer? And let me know why that makes a big difference for you. Every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central, we do What's Up Wednesday. It's a live Q&A and community discussion chat. Love to have you there every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central for What's Up Wednesday. Until we see you soon, we always like to say journey on and peace be with you. Thanks for watching. Appreciate that. Bye-bye.